Chris Haig and this is the Fiddle Channel. Today we're going to be playing a tune called Mizzaloo. And uh, there's a lot you can do with this tune, but I first have to talk about the fascinating story behind um, where this tune comes from. Everybody knows it, uh, whether they realise it or not. And not, not a lot of people actually know the name Mizzaloo, um, but we'll come to that. So first of all, how does everybody know it? Uh, we know it because Dick Dale, who was the, the king of surf guitar back in the 1960s in California, uh, he one night was asked, um, is it possible to play a tune uh, tomorrow on, on the guitar on a single string? And apparently he went home and scratched his head and was really worried about this, um, this thing that he felt he had to do. And then he suddenly remembered his uncle, uh, his uncle being Lebanese, who played the oud, and one of the tunes that he played on the oud was this uh, tune, Mizaloo. Um, and um, it could be played on one string. So uh, the following day he had a go and he, he sped it up an awful lot and he gave it a kind of driving rhythm. And um, he played uh, this rocking version of Mizaloo, which is the one that we know. Uh, so he recorded it. Uh, it was used by um, the film Pulp Fiction. Uh, which is also how it got to be really well known in 1994. That was using the Dick Dale original. Um, and strangely it was used um, as Pump It by the Black Eyed Peas. So the first time I heard it, I, I wasn't really aware of any of these versions until um, I one day was playing at a Jewish wedding and this was placed in front of me, we're going to play Mizzaloo. So off I started and I suddenly thought, yes, I recognise this. Um, is it a klezmer number? And um, I went home and I uh, spent a bit of time on the internet researching where does this tune come from. So I found out what I've just told you. Uh, the name was given to it by the first recording, which was in 1930, by a Rembetica Greek artist called Michaelis Patrinos. And um, he gave it the name. And it kind of became associated with Greek music from then on. It was recorded by Woody Herman in 1941 as a very schmaltzy, uh, slow swing number with words. And it was recorded by Pete Seeger in uh, the Carnegie Hall as an example of Greek folk music. And you can hear a recording of that with him playing banjo and um, everyone joining in um, singing the, the melody, which is great fun. But uh, we have to go back a lot further than uh, 1930. Because this tune is probably from um, Armenia, which is kind of the, the, the part of Turkey settled by the Greeks back in um, millennia ago. And that's the part of the world it probably comes from, although I think it's probably claimed by a whole load of different countries. So when I came to do a backing track for this, I, uh, I couldn't find a surf guitar. Uh, version uh, that would work on um, Band in a Box, which is what I use, and I couldn't find a klezmer version, um, but what we do have is a very nice rumba, and it fits the rumba perfectly, but I'm going to give it a kind of a klezmer feel, and um, I think for the fiddle, trying to go for that full-on rock approach, uh, it's not necessarily going to work so well. Um, incidentally, the original is in E, or a slightly out of tune E, um, that's on the Dick Dale version, and um, for the fiddle I think it's a lot better in D. So we have an intro, and this is a kind of a, a typical slow klezmer intro. Uh, I'll show you what, that with the chords, and add, I'll, I'll add a few little things to it. two Ds together. So I'm putting a, a little E flat and a little flick and you can make that flick into a proper krecht by using your forefinger and just um, flicking the string ever so slightly. You 
can also make the, the note whistle by taking all the pressure off the bow. Then we're into the melody. And uh, an open A drone is great at the beginning. And I'm using my second finger for that slide. And you can do a third finger trill. Then the open A drone again. And a nice slide down and up. Sliding that E flat down. Then it repeats, and if you want, you can go up an octave. And D is always a good key for chip switching octaves. And here, open D underneath it. And now we can drone with the A underneath the melody. And that's uh, a nice correct. Then we're jumping up to the, uh, the middle part, and I'm doing this right down at the heel. I'm very choppy. And you can do a nice double stop here. Hammer on to that D with the second finger underneath it. Then we got now here I'm doing three descending parts, and I'm aware that on the original there's only two descending parts. Um, it's just that the way I learnt the melody, this is how I learnt it, and it kind of makes some kind of sense, but you might well decide that you want to stay with the original arrangement, in which case you'd be doing this. Um, and then... So either way, um, that part ends and then it's back to the beginning again. Um, if you want to do something akin to the uh, the Dick Dale version, then a nice uh, slide down. One of those would be good. Um, I think he does that on the original, but strumming really hard uh, with the plectrum. I'll play it twice round to finish. If you enjoyed this, then um, subscribe, send me an email, and I can send you a copy of the dots. And uh, have fun with it. Thank you.